Hey guys, it's Chris with Highline Guitars. Welcome to my YouTube guitar building channel. Uh, today's video is going to be part six of my four string bass guitar build. In part five, I made the fretboard. So that means in this episode, I'm going to be making the headstock contour and heel of the guitar neck itself. And I'll be carving that out of this piece of hard rock maple. So let me bring you in a little closer and I'm going to show you what I need to do before I uh, press the carve button. I consider a guitar neck to be made of two parts, at least the guitar necks that I make. One is the fretboard, which I made in the last episode, and then the other part is the shaft, which includes the headstock, the back contour shape, and the heel. So what I'm going to be making is the shaft. And the question that comes up often is, how do I um, register two-sided carving? Because when I make the shaft, I'm gonna be doing some of the operations in the top side of the blank, and then the other operations will be cut in the other side. Obviously, that means I have to clamp the board down, carve one side, then once that's done, flip it over, and I need to make sure that the blank is registered so that when I carve the other side, everything lines up. Otherwise, everything would be a little bit off. So the way I do it is pretty simple. What I do is first I will measure the width of my blank, and then I'm going to put a, a line on the edge that represents that center mark. I'm then going to do the exact same thing on this side. Now I always measure from the same side to the center. That way I can ensure uh, reliable consistency. If I were to measure one end from this edge and then the other end from that edge, they may not be exactly centered. So I will measure from both the, the edges. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the length of the blank and I will make a mark down the side at the exact center. And I'll do the same on the other edge as well. Those lines will then be used to position the blank relative to two perpendicular lines that I have engraved into the wasteboard of my CNC machine. I have one that runs the length all the way from the front to the back and it's at the very center of the wasteboard or actually the CNC machine's working space width. Then I have another line that runs across which is at the exact center of the working space depth. So this line that runs all the way from the front to the back is exactly parallel with my y-axis rails and then the line that runs perpendicular across its width is exactly parallel with the x-axis. So by placing these lines right on the engraved lines, I can be assured that the blank is now positioned in a known location on the wasteboard. Then what I can do is I can home the machine. And what that does is it moves the machine, the spindle, to a known location on the, on the CNC machine itself. And it does this by relying on input from the limit switches that are built into the Y-axis, the X-axis, and the Z-axis. So once those homing switches are tripped, the machine will have the spindle, the center of the spindle, in exactly the uh, home position, which on, on this machine is in the lower left corner of its uh, the start of its total uh, distance of travel, both on the Y and the X axis, as well as the Z axis. That information is now in the brain of the CNC machine, which is the controller that's located down below the machine. From there, I can simply jog the machine 24 inches um, on the x-axis, which will place the center of the spindle right at the center of the working space. Then I can jog it back 24 inches on the um, y-axis, and that's going to place the spindle right over the very center 
of the board. I can then jog it back half the length of my blank and then over half the width of my blank. And that places the center of the spindle right over the lower left corner of my blank. And that's going to be my XY start position. Then using a probe, I can set the Z axis height above the workpiece. Once that carving operation is done for the top side, I can then flip the blank over, reposition it so that the lines are on my um, engraved lines on the waste board, clamp it down, and the, the spindle will still be in that same position, the XYZ start position. So I can just start the carve over again. Um, I could also, if necessary, rehome it and then reposition it. So that's basically, in a nutshell, how I do uh, two-sided carving and how I register the blanks so that I can be assured that the carving on one side is going to line up with the carving on the other side. Now, some folks are going to say, have you considered using a pin alignment system? Yes, I have. I've used that in the past. And all I will say is you have to stop and think through the process of drilling the holes in the blank that will uh, accept the pins in the wasteboard for registration purposes. You have to make sure that those holes are very precisely positioned. So think about what is going to be required to do that. Drawing little tick lines at the center points on each edge is so much faster and easier to do. And I've been cutting necks and bodies now for five years on CNC, and I've never had an issue with uh, any of the two-sided carving being out of registration. So for me, that works. So now I'm gonna get everything set up and I'm gonna start carving the top side of this blank. After the truss rod slot was completed, the spindle returned to the XYZ start position. And what I'm going to do now is raise up the spindle so I can swap the ball nose bit for a flat end mill, which is what I'm going to use to carve the front of the headstock.
All right, so with the front of the headstock finished, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move the whole gantry out of the way. I'm gonna unclamp the blank and then flip it over and realign my little center lines with the engraved lines on the wasteboard. Then I can proceed with cutting everything on the back side of the neck blank. Now you're probably wondering, how come I don't use the dust shoe that came with the machine? I always do, except when I'm making videos. When the dust shoe's in place, you can't see the work that's being done, and well, that makes for some boring video. Okay, for this next carving operation, I'm going to swap out this quarter inch diameter end mill for an eighth inch diameter end mill. And that's because the first operation on this side is going to be drilling the pilot holes in the heel that will be used to mount the neck into the body of the guitar. Okay, for the next carving operation, what I have to do is drill those tiny little holes, pilot holes, that are used to hold the tuning pegs in place on the back side of the headstock. You know, those really tiny screws? So what I'm gonna use to do that is a 16th inch diameter bit. Now I have to use a drill bit because I don't have an end mill, a 16th inch diameter end mill that has a long enough reach to drill the depth of hole that I need. So to do that, I'm gonna have to replace the collet that's in the spindle with a collet that is specifically designed to hold bits that have a 16th of an inch diameter shaft. So that's what I'm gonna be using. Now what I have to do next is drill the actual holes for mounting the tuners. And unfortunately I don't have a bit that's large enough to drill that size of a hole. However, it's really more of a pocket anyway. So what I'm gonna do is switch back to my quarter inch bit and then I'm gonna use a quarter inch diameter ball end mill to pocket that hole into the headstock. And the reason I'm using a ball end bit for this rather than just a regular flat end mill is because the remaining carving operations are gonna use the ball end. So I might as well just stick with that and then I won't have to worry about making another bit change later on.
All right, guys, well, the neck shaft is finished. So what I need to do next is install the truss rod and then I'll glue on the fretboard. And that's gonna happen in the next episode. So I hope you found this video to be useful and I hope I've earned your thumbs up. Uh, please click that thumbs up button if so. And if you enjoy watching videos on building guitars and like the way that I do this, click that subscribe button and make sure your notifications in YouTube are set so that you will be notified each time I post up a new guitar building video, which is usually twice a week. And then in the meantime, if you would like to show my channel some support and keep me going, Head over to eGuitarPlans.com and purchase a plan for either a guitar or one of the different tools that I use to build guitars, including my old Yeller CNC machine. And if you would like something more tangible than a plan, you could always buy a Highline Guitars t-shirt. Uh, they're displayed in the merch shelf down below the description. And if you don't see that merch shelf, uh, there's a link in the description below as well. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.